Okay, today we're starting living things. I'm working from pages 222 to 243 in your book. That'll be the whole section. But for today, we're just going to go up to page 225. So organisms. First thing you need to know is that all living things are called organisms. All living things are called organisms. Organisms vary in size, right? They can be as small as bacteria or an amoeba or even a plankton. They can be big like a puppy or humans or a flower or a frog. They vary in sizes. They all have different behaviors. They all have different food requirements. Plants don't eat the same way that humans eat, right? And they all have a lifespan. A lifespan is the length of time an organism is expected to live. They all have differences, but they all have some things that are in common, which categorize them as an organism. And we're going to go through that. So all living things use energy. All living things use energy. The main source of energy that all living things on earth use is the sun, right? But they also they use energy and all living things have these other things in common. One, they're all made up of cells. They all grow. They all respond to a stimulus. They can all re reproduce. Doesn't mean they do reproduce, but they can all reproduce if they want it. They all have the ability to reproduce, let me say it that way. They all have the ability to reproduce. They all have locomotion, which means that they can move. They all maintain homeostasis and they all obtain food. A cell is the smallest unit of an organism that carries on the function of life. The smallest unit. And that cell carries on the DNA of the organism. So this is an example of cheek cells, something we would have done if school was still in session. We'd use the microscope to look at your cheek cells. This is the cell here. It's an animal cell. And right there you can see the nucleus on the cell. But we'll get to that a little later on in the unit. If you look at any part of an organism under a microscope, you will find cells. Cells take in materials from their surrounding to use. Some organisms have just one cell, while others have many. All cells hold hereditary material known as DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. Unicellular versus multicellular. Think of UNO, the card game UNO. You call out UNO when you have one card. Well, in Latin, one is uni, or uni, however you want to say it. So unicellular is an organism with just one cell. The organism grows only when that one cell grows. If that one cell doesn't grow, then the organism won't grow. All right, so this is an amoeba. You can see here in the center, when this one comes back, there is a cell. When that cell grows, the organism will grow bigger. If that one cell dies, then the organism is going to die. Now compare that to a multicellular organism. These are organisms with more than one cell. Multicellular, they have multiple. The organism grow when the cells multiply. So there are more cells. So if you have, you start off with five cells, and now you have 10 cells, the organism is going to get bigger. And now you have 1,000 cells, the organism is going to get bigger. All right? So we are multicellular. Plants are multicellular. Animals are multicellular. Things that would be unicellular would be there are some bacteria, amoeba, a plankton. Those would be unicellular. All living things grow. Again, unicellular organisms grow when the cell grows, 
multicellular organisms organisms grow when the cells multiply. And here, some of you are familiar with the plankton from SpongeBob. That is a unicellular organism. In order for multicellular organisms to grow, their cells must go through a process known as mitosis. So basically what's happening here, you see the squiggly line in there? That's the hereditary material. It copies that, the cell makes a copy, and then splits in half, and each part gets a copy of the hereditary material. And then those two cells will split and make four, and those four cells will split and make eight. And as this is going on, the organism is growing while other cells are dying. But it's okay, we're in a unicellular organism, if the one cell dies, the organism's gonna die. And a multicellular, the organism um, has many cells, some will die, but they're being replaced, constantly being replaced, so it's okay. Respond to a stimulus. So I'm now on page 224 of your book. Anything that causes a change in an organism is a stimulus, anything like from the outside. So a response is just that, how you respond, how your body responds to it. So let's say you touch something hot. You move your hand away, that is a response, right? When you go to the doctor's office and he hits you with the hammer on your knee or a little bit below your knee and you kick your foot out, that is a response to the stimulus. When you have sunlight, a plant will grow towards the sunlight. That is a response to something that's happening outside of the plant. How about this? When you sneeze, you automatically close your eyes. So your body is responding to the sneeze. It doesn't want, it's trying to get rid of something. It doesn't want it to go back into your eyes. So you close your eyes. All living things have the ability to reproduce. If an entire species didn't reproduce, they would go extinct, right? So when I say all living things have the ability to reproduce, I don't mean each one of these ducks is going to reproduce. What I mean is the species have the ability to reproduce. All humans, the species of humans have the ability to reproduce, but that doesn't mean each human will reproduce. They don't have to. But if no human reproduced, then the human species would be extinct. It would go extinct. So, A characteristic of organisms, of living things, is that they reproduce, is that they grow, is that they respond to a stimulus, is that they have locomotion. Locomotion is the ability to move from one place to another. Now, when you look at plants, people are like, oh, plants can't move. Well, they do. They bend toward the sun. If you take your plant that's by a window and rotate it about 90 degrees, you will see in a couple of days that that plant will bend towards the light. It will bend the opposite direction that it is. Living things maintain homeostasis. All right, so what is homeostasis? Homeostasis is when your body internally regulates itself. No matter what's going on externally, your body inside is staying the same so that you can live. So the regulation of an organism's internal environment despite what's happening in the outside environment. So let's take a runner for instance. When someone is running or exercising, you get hot, correct? If you were to continuously get hot, your body temperature would go up and that would not be good for you. So what happens? You sweat. You sweat and that cools off your body to, excuse me, to maintain homeostasis within your body. Here's another example. When you go outside, let's say it's 30 degrees outside. If your internal body temperature were to drop to 30 degrees, that would not be good for you. For argument's sake, let's say your internal body temperature is 98.6. 
when you go outside, it's still 98.6. Some of the things that your body does to maintain this homeostasis, to maintain that 98.6, is to shiver. And the movement causes your body to be a little bit warmer. Another thing, like we discussed, if it's, too, if it's hot outside, you don't want your body temperature to shoot up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So your body sweats to try to cool you off. That's maintaining homeostasis. So what do all living things need? Not what do they, what do they all have in common, but do they all need? They all need a place to live. So humans need shelter. Plants need the proper environment. So a cacti, a cactus would not survive in Antarctica, let's say. It's not the proper environment for it, right? So they all need a place to live. They all need water. Humans drink water. We also get it from our food sources. Plants take in water through their roots, right? They all need water and they all need a food source. You can see this butterfly is um, taking in some nectar from the plant. Uh, the plant actually makes its own food, a glucose, through photosynthesis. Humans eat food. And of course, without the sun, none of us would be here. So we all need the sun to live. But a place to live, water, and a food source. All right, so I want you to go back through, take some notes, and then I want you to quiz yourself. You're gonna come here on this page, you're gonna read the question, click whichever answer you think is right. If it's not right, click the arrow to come back to this page. If it is right, you'll know, and click the arrow to come back to this page. Have a great day.